Let's see what's inside this bad boy. Here we go. Here we go. Have you heard the name Harrison Labs? If not, maybe you should, because according to the research I did, I actually made the first car audio amp. 1974, they developed the first standalone auto sound amplifier, U.S. patent number 4056783 by Audio Kinetics Corporation, which is what Harrison Labs was called before they were called Harrison Labs. They also introduced the first super caps, or what they call stiffening caps, and then they also had these other devices called the F-Mods. You guys have may have seen these before. They're kind of inline crossovers you can use with your amplifiers. So let's go to 2000 in this car stereo review and check out Harrison Labs, and we see this Drag Queen Mono Power Amplifier, $3,000. Says it's stable to 0.25 ohms, 20,000 watts. What is this all about? It also talks about either having caps or having batteries internal and up to 150 pounds. Look at the 2000 Car Audio and Electronics as well, the directory. And it's even more interesting here because we see two different Drag Queens. We see a Drag Queen 1 and a Drag Queen 2. And yeah up to five thousand dollars and sixteen hundred watts by eight we'll talk about that model and additional model here coming up soon in the video so stick around for that so what we did is we looked up archive.org and looked up harrison labs unfortunately their website is not so great for the old content but we did find the drag queen 10kw amp for three thousand dollars again so it appears those directories were correct here's the amplifier very unique looking amplifier you can see the dimensions here it's actually really long 34 inches by 14 inches wide by about eight inches tall so it's a pretty big amplifier and here on the front of the amp you can see some leds over on the far left side there's two different distribution blocks those are actually for the speaker outputs then we have the input section for the power ground uh, turn on and also the rca Here's a closer look at the LEDs, the two different terminal blocks. Again, those are for the speakers, which seems kind of odd, but yeah, that's how it works. And then again, here on the far right side, you see a single RCA jack, power, ground, and remote turn on. As we're trying to get into the guts here, we're gonna do some big dummy math for you. Uh, it says 60 amp fuses. Let's see, there's four of those in there. And it says 200 amps max. So I'm not really sure if that's new math or when, when this thing came out. Is this in the late, late, late 90s? Late 90? Uh, well before Common Core. <laughs> well before Common Core. So we have 110 uh, to 500 hertz, 625 watts at 4 ohms, and it's a quarter ohm minimum. It did come with batteries that were custom made with little logos and it even has a little HL on the top. There was four. Is that right, Jason? Four batteries? Six. Six batteries. So you got six batteries, you got a big old fat amp that looks like it was put together at your local HVAC place, right? Isn't that like HVAC aluminum, kind of? Yeah. Yeah, so probably went and stole some uh, some heat exchanger units from the attic of people so they can make some amps. You big dummy. But we're gonna get inside of it here and we'll show you what it, what it looks like, so stay tuned. Let's see what's inside this bad boy. Here we go. Here we go. What? Where's the beef? Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Harrison Laboratory. This is the Drag Queen 20,000 watt burp app. <laughs> really? <laughs> Nothing there. <laughs> Actually, this is where all the batteries go, according to the manual. Batteries go in here, but still, doesn't look like a whole lot of goodness for me. Do have a couple fans. Have an audio amplifier board here. We have the key, the one key to rule them all. Right here, it goes into the amp. It actually connects the, uh, the uh, relay, sorry, oh. relay. <laughs> 
It, it lays the reed. And here's a charging circuit board to charge up the batteries or caps to their full voltage. And yeah, it looks like it was made from an HVAC manufacturer. It's like, I don't know, 16th of an inch, I think maybe, aluminum. There's another board here. Super rare to have even see one of these and to see the batteries with it. There's two of the four batteries. We don't have all four, we don't have all six. It did have six at one time, but they were lost in transit, unfortunately. But yeah, just a cool little amp here. It's got one RCA jack and power and ground, and there's a trigger. It's not a turn on, they call it a trigger. So don't pull that. Triggers and keys, and we do have little LEDs, and we have fault. I bet you that fault light comes on a lot. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like when we first opened it up, we thought, hey, it's missing all the internals. But when we looked at the manual that came with it, it actually shows that the batteries, see the batteries actually go on the inside. It's either a six battery configuration or a four battery configuration. We were supposed to have six, but I think a couple of the batteries got lost in transit. Thank you, UPS. But let's go back to the first page. Specs, power output, four battery model, 50 volts nominal, squared and divided by speaker impedance. Maximum power, non-warranty at eighth ohm, 20,000 watts. Typical RMS power is 10,000 watts at a quarter ohm and 5,000 at half an ohm. Yeah. I believe that it's class HL designed for 30 second audio burst to drive woofers up to 300 Hertz. Very, very interesting. So the 20,000 watt amplifier, look at the power wire here. Can you see that? That is maybe 16 gauge. So instead of sounding like a complete dummy, I wanted to get some information from not only the owner, but also an amplifier engineer to find out what was going on inside this amp. And basically what happens is the batteries work as the rail voltage for the audio rail. So that's how you can get that much power with just using a standard 12 volt input. And also the amplifier only requires like a 30 amp input to charge up the batteries and then it goes for about 30 seconds or so with the burst. So one of these circuit boards here is actually for charging to keep the batteries or capacitors at full charge. So I contacted Harrison Labs for some clarification. I actually got a response back from Stan Harrison. What about this Drag King? He said, well, they made one, but I have a picture here from Emmanuel that shows he has two of them. That's a 40,000 watt amp. So the Drag Queen, there was approximately five of them made around the year 2000. They were banned around the year 2001. It creates frequencies between 20 and 200 hertz. It uses a 12 volt input to charge the batteries like I've already said. And he said that it produced a clip signal which you could not hear from the speakers, but that allowed it to produce so much power. We had 95% efficiency. However, the amp was banned back in 2001 from all of the SPL sanctioning bodies. And here's a response from Harrison Labs back in 2001 saying, it's only the drag queen that's illegal. Our other amps are okay. So I know you guys would love to see me test this on the dyno, but this amp is so rare. It was actually in Texas with my friend Jason. And just to get a chance to look at it, you know, it was super cool. So, so there will be no amp dyno test, but maybe in the future, who knows? We might put some lithium batteries in here and try it out. But also over the same weekend, we had the old school meet down in Texas. Got some really cool footage. It'll be coming up in a future video. And also we visited Kicker in Stillwater, Oklahoma and got an awesome tour that we're gonna cover that as well in a future video. So can't wait to show you guys all the goodies. So as always, thank you for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing to my channel, supporting me at patreon.com slash old school stereo. You guys rock. Till next time, Big D. I'm out of here. All right. Do you have any last words, AJ, before? Uh... <laughs> You're speechless now? Expect to be hurting when you get out.
<laughs> He's smiling right now, but. Get this, uh, you ready? You ready? Ready. All right, here she comes. 